What's up guys, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I've got another exciting product for you guys today to review. Uh, FPV model was kind enough to send me a set of four motors. They just released a new line of uh, motors that they're gonna be uh, uh, selling here on their website. Actually, I believe they're available now. I'll put the links in the description below. I was able to, uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of the reviewers for the MC2204 2300 KV motors. The reason I picked these is because right now there is that uh, huge mini quad craze. Everybody wants those mini quads. Uh, so they're all getting them, getting just into them and, you know, figuring out what motors, what frames, what ESCs and whatnot to use. So, um, I chose to review the 2300 KV motors. Uh, these were provided to me for the review. So uh, I'm gonna try to give you guys my fair and unbiased opinion of these motors. Um, first thing, if I had to judge a book by its cover, they look great in the little packaging that they come in. Um, I've already went ahead and cracked this one open, so let's do a quick unboxing for you guys. Motors are packaged really nice and neat. They're sealed when they get here to help uh, prevent any moisture or anything like that getting in there. They got a little foam cover on the top. And uh, we've got the little parts bag here. As you can see, you've got the little um, motor, uh, the prop adapter, and you've got some two millimeter screws, some bullet connectors, and some uh, heat shrink there. Also, we got the motor here in the packaging. Again, another little piece of foam to help protect it on its journey here. Um, let's get it out of the bag here. This motor, uh, in my opinion, should be a good competition to the new to the uh, T motors that are out there. Um, just initially taking a look at it, this motor looks really, really good. Very nice finish. The aluminum feels great. It's not all um, uh, you know rough. There's no unfinished edges. Uh, overall, it looks like a great motor. Just spinning around here by hand, it feels great. I mean, it's very, very smooth. It's not clunky. It's not rough. I don't feel any of that. Um, uh, for lack of better words, aggressiveness of like per se the NTM motors or some of the other motors that are out there. But uh, in my opinion, this feels probably the closest to a T motor. Um, looking through the bell, I'm seeing the windings. The windings look really nice. They're very, very uh, tight windings. They, there's no crooked wiring or anything sticking out anywhere. Uh, overall, it looks really, really good. Let me grab my micrometer here and give you guys the motor shaft size. So uh, judging by that, looks like it's got a three three millimeter motor. So that's really good for those guys that fly really rough and end up snapping their motor shafts and things like that. The mounting holes we've got roughly looks like 15 millimeters on the smaller side, and looking at about 18 or 19 millimeters on the uh, top side. They look like the standard motor. Um, configuration for a lot of the motor mounts and the mini quads that are out there. So let's back up here a little bit and get uh, get a shot of this little contraption that I've made. I actually made this rig uh, a couple months back. Um, I used this rig to test out different thrusts and things like that for uh, motors and things like that. Uh, as you can see I've got a little aluminum or metal um, little bracket here. It sits on a hinge. We got the top of my fulcrum here and that's tied into my scale. So essentially how this is going to work is we're going to mount this motor up to the um, mounting holes. I've got two different mounting holes for larger and smaller motors here. So I'll mount it up to the mounting holes here. I'll throw a prop on there and uh, we'll power it up and see how much thrust it pulls. This is just a fish scale that uh, I had when I went out fishing a couple months back and I decided to use it for this purpose. I'm going to be using the um, watt meter here and I'll try to give you guys the readings of the different prop configurations and also running 3S and 4S configurations. I've got a little 20 amp ESC with a servo tester. So let's get all this stuff uh, rigged up and give you guys a couple of stats. Guys, uh, I've got my motor set up here to the rig. I wanted to go over a couple things real quick. Uh, first, to talk about the prop adapter. Uh, after looking at it a little bit more carefully, this is a really nice quality finish prop adapter. The only things that I noticed is that it's hollow. Now, usually they hollow them out like this to make them um, a little bit lighter, so that way they can, you know, uh, keep the weight off. And also, it helps with um, when you mount it on there. It's got the little little hollow point right there to um, line up to the main holes on the uh, motor. Uh, another thing too that I noticed, I'm not sure if they have the counter reversed prop adapters. Now to me that's not a big deal. I always make sure that my props are on there nice and tight. Um, some people like the uh, clockwise and counterclockwise motor adapters. To me it's not a big deal. 
One thing I will note though, um, I usually run gem fans on my mini quads. Great thing. I don't need a spacer. These uh, motor, the prop adapters fit perfectly straight and nice and flush on the gem fans. There's no uh, wiggle room or anything like that. So you don't need the prop adapters. All right, so we're gonna run a couple uh, tests here. Okay, so the first one is going to be the 5030 prop. I'm gonna run it with the 1800 3S and then I'm gonna put a 4S on there as well. So I give you guys the two stats for them. I'll also give you the watts and about how much uh, thrust it's putting. Now my little contraption is not the most accurate contraption, but it will give you a general idea of what the uh, stats are. So you can pretty much say, you know, if it's pulling 0.4 kilograms or whatnot, and you have that multiplied by four, you can kind of count up your power and see your thrust and whatnot. And uh, we'll also see how many uh, amps and things like that they're pulling. All right, so we've got my little contraption all rigged up here. As you can see, the scale is set up right here as uh, kilograms. And if I pull on this just a little bit, you can see uh, the kilograms um, going. So right now I'm putting about 260 grams of thrust um, onto this motor. So we'll let that zero out here. So we're at zero now and we'll get our multimeter going. As you can see, we've got 12.5 uh, volts on this 3S LiPo. Let's go ahead and spool it up real quick and just listen to the motor noises. Just a quick initial power up. That motor sounds really nice and smooth. Um, I don't know, I hope the mic can pick up the best audio, but it, it sounds really smooth uh, when it powers up. So let's go ahead and pump it up to half throttle. All right, I'm about half throttle right now, and we're pulling about four kilograms. We're pulling about two amps, 2.8 amps on the, uh, on the uh, watch, and we're pulling about 34.4 watts. So let's crank up the power to full. All right, there we go. There's a little bit better accurate reading. So uh, 0.15 kilograms, which is about, what is that? 150. About 150 grams of uh, thrust. Sounds pretty good. That's on 3S. So let's go ahead and zero that out. If you want to take a quick stat, uh, picture of the stats, looks like it pulled 7.5 amps at full. It uh, looks like the max watts was 90, 90 watts that it pulled from the motor. I'm actually looking at the amps. Seven and a half amps on a 3S LiPo. That's actually pretty good. That's actually, I'm sorry, two, two point, seven and a half amps at full is actually pretty efficient. So times that by four, we're looking at 14 about 28, about 20, just under 30, uh, just under 30 amps for a full quadcopter on 30 amps. That's at full throttle. So rough calculations usually is about 30% at half throttle. I'm thinking probably somewhere around the 10 amps at cruise, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more, about 12 amps at cruise, if that. All right, so let's go ahead and unplug the 3S. All right, guys, we're going to give it a go real quick with the uh, 4S power. Let me go ahead and plug this in and uh, get our watts and everything powered up. All right, I'm going to do a, a full throttle pass here, and I'll hold it there for about 10 seconds. Uh, usually that will stop any bursts from the battery and the ESC, and it'll kind of plateau off. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> Okay, that was a lot of power. Uh, my my scale's showing 29.29 kilograms, so 290, almost 300 grams of thrust on 4S, and this is still a five by three. We haven't even switched to a five by four. I'm touching the motor here, and it's barely even warm to the touch. I mean, it, it feels lukewarm. It doesn't even feel warm. I mean, it's pretty cold in the garage. I would say it's probably about 50 degrees, and putting my hands on it, I barely feel any heat. Uh, this so far has impressed me with its power and its efficiency with its smoothness as well. At full throttle, I was pulling 11.4 amps. So those of you guys running those 12 amp ESCs, you're going to be right at the right at the peak, but you still got a little bit of room to um, to play with. 
On 4S, 5x4 gem fan prop, we're pulling 178 watts. That is quite a bit of power. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the next part. Uh, we're going to put the 50-40, and I'm thinking that these results are just going to be amazing. All right, we've switched out the 50-30 uh, prop, and now we've got a 5-4. This is also a gem fan prop on here, and we're going to go ahead and give it a go. I want to just do a quick mention here, guys. My little contraption is probably not the most accurate, but it'll give you a pretty good reading. And I would give yourself plus or minus 15% when this is on an actual multi-rotor, you're going to have less drag and you're going to have more airflow with these little tiny arms. So you might actually get a little bit better results than what I'm showing you guys here. All right, guys, we've got the 50-40 the props on there and uh, we're going to give it a quick half throttle pass. We're going to measure the uh, thrust and also the watts and the amps that it's pulling at about half throttle. So let's go ahead and get this thing spooled up. All right, that was a half throttle pass. Um, you can see me, I keep grabbing the motor. I'm expecting it to get hot and it's not even warming up. Man, that is really cool. Feel that motor. Feel that motor. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> all right, good deal. Uh, I want to thank Papu on the camera here helping me out. So uh, a half throttle, we were pulling about six and a half amps. I actually cranked it up a little bit higher. This is going to read the peak amps. So it's about six and a half amps at uh, full throttle on a 3S 50-40. Let's go ahead and give it a full throttle pass. Actually, yeah, that was at about a half throttle pass. So we're going to go ahead and give it a full throttle pass. Let's clear that. All right. My little fishing scale's getting kinked up here. All right, guys, looks like uh, full throttle pass on a three cell setup. 50-40 prop, we're pulling about 0.17, so about 170, uh, 180 uh, grams of thrust. Motor is still cold to the touch. I'm, I'm, I keep grabbing it, expecting it to warm up at all, but this is just a very smooth and efficient running motor. Looks like we're pulling about 125 watts at full throttle, and 10.7 amps was the peak. Um, when I saw it, it had kind of leveled off at around 9 amps. So that's pretty efficient for these little multi-copters. If you're running about a 2200 or let's say a 1300 LiPo, you probably get about 8-9 eight, eight, minutes flight time with these things. All right, now for the real test. Let's go ahead and disconnect the 3S. Let's go ahead and pop in the 4 cell. Now, I should have probably done this from the get-go, but I'm going to grab some glasses because I'm thinking this motor is going to have a lot of power for these uh, 4 cell setups. Safety first or last, whichever way. <laughs> Let's get you those two. All right. Get that set up there. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're going to do a half throttle pass. <laughs> Holy cow. That is insane. All right. Point. 26 kilograms, so 260 grams at half throttle. Guys, if your mini quad weighs 500 grams all out weight, you've got a four to one power ratio. I'm sorry, a two to one power ratio. So that thing is just gonna skyrocket at quarter throttle. Going back to the readings, it was about 11.7 at peak at half throttle. Um, I saw it level back down at around 10 amps, so you guys are definitely going to need to run those 20 amp ESCs uh, if you guys do want to run this on 4 cell setup with the 5.4 prop, but you are going to have a rocket ship. That was only half throttle. Should we do a full throttle pass? Yeah. All right, let's do full throttle and just see what happens. I'm going to get a good grip on the uh, the base here because I have a feeling it's just going to fly off the, uh, the bench here. All right. Let's lock that out. Whoo! <laughs> 0.34 
four kilograms. That's 340 grams on a five by four with a four cell setup. I was pulling a max of 15.8 amps, so that's actually really efficient for a mini quad. But I'm trying to think of the numbers here. Again, if your quad weighs about 500 grams and you're putting out 340 with just one motor, imagine that times four. I think one motor should be enough to just get your, pro your, get your quad up in the air. Um, I am touching the motor here, and it feels a little bit warmer than the previous test. Um, you want to give that a quick touch real quick and tell me what you think? I'm slightly Slightly warm. warmer. Yeah, just a very little bit warmer, and I think that's just because it's been uh, uh, running you know, at full burst for about 10 seconds. But, guys, these motors so far have really, really impressed me. Um, and I'm, I'm a very, very upfront person. I'll let you guys know if I like a product or I don't. Uh, these these motors I definitely like so this is gonna wrap up the first part of this test I'm gonna give you guys a part two of this motor test what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this on a mini quad I've got a little surprise for you guys for the uh, second video um, we're gonna throw this on an actual quad and we're gonna show you guys some flight footage with the motor and I'll show you guys some third person and first person view of how the motors perform um, I'll look for things like jello and um, efficiency and you know just all about durability I won't know anything about longevity because these motors are really fresh but uh, based on the initial build quality and what I'm seeing I think these will be some pretty long-lasting motors I'll go ahead and put links in the description below for where you can find these motors and if you guys have any questions don't forget to leave that in the comments below if there was anything I missed or you guys saw something that uh, maybe we should re-evaluate uh, please let me know uh, if this video helps you and, and uh, you guys like these motors uh, or you guys are interested in these motors and this video helped you, don't forget to click the like button and to uh, stay tuned for the second part of this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button. I'm Johnny with Team Legit. I got Bapu on the camera for me today. Thanks for watching. I'm here with Daniel from X Hover. I told you guys to bring you a little surprise uh, testing out these motors. Now, I'm an okay quadcopter pilot, but Daniel is the expert. This guy rips and shreds these little mini quads. He's also the creator of the uh, MXP230. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a lot of comparison videos and actually seen flight footage of the MXP230. It's one of the most durable frames. So what we've done is uh, I've given